So thank you for joining us on this episode of Diaspora Lounge. We're talking about Nigeria, the protests and what's going on in the country. And I've thought about this thing and one thing that I realize is Nigeria is like a family with different family members. And with every family, if we all have different strengths, to me, I think that the issue is that we're not recognizing that we have different strengths and we are working from a place of selfishness. And if only the people in power at different times, the different regimes would understand that every part has its own strengths and its own weaknesses. And it behoves on us to use the strengths of each part to make the whole of Nigeria function well. We would all fare better. But what we've seen is that all these years, different parts of the country are put at disadvantages depending on who is in power. And because of that, we're not doing as well as we could. In fact, we're doing very poorly. So why don't we begin to think that way? I know that it sounds kind of naive for me to imagine that someone would come and say, okay, let me be fair without being tribalistic when it's been like a culture for us. So I want to hear from, from the people in the studio. I have people on the panel here. Let's see what other people think. And before that, let me just play an intro and then we can start one second i hope i don't touch the wrong thing what is yeah so, so what, what, what were you saying i was saying that um you know there are fundamental princi principles in life you know yeah. this i'm not a political person and i'm just looking at things from the way that i would see things in in life generally but if you look at life if you look at your personal relationships you can function the same way with in a country you don't, it's not it's not different just because it's a country when you are putting people at, at a disadvantage it's like if you have a family or if you have your fingers your five fingers everyone has its role and if everybody's performing at their optimum then the whole hand will function well the family will function well it's not different for the country and if you look at what's happening in the country what has been happening in the country over the years we have a lot of, for instance, we have in the East, right now we have the Igbo must go thing going on in Nigeria. Even when Igbo said they didn't want to be part of the protest, people came up and started accusing Igbos of being the ones organizing the protest. And even when protests were going on and Igbos were not going in to join the protest, people started attacking some Igbo businesses and stores saying that they must join the protest. And over the years, we haven't had a president from the East. Yes, I'm from the East, but that's not why I'm saying this. I'm just saying this, just watching how things work in life. Over the years, we haven't had a president from the East. Um, yeah, you will say, good luck, Jonathan. But even then, if you see how things have progressed, in the East, we have people who are the main ones who you can call the inventors, people who create things. And if the East was empowered, then Nigeria would have more things to export, which will be beneficial for the whole country at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Also look at the seaports. We have so many more. We have more of the riverine areas in the southeast. But where are the ports in Nigeria from where we get our imports? Do you understand? So people are stagnated so that their strengths are not being used at the optimum. And this is because we just want to put down the next person. Whereas if these things were, were buffered and enabled, it will function well for the whole country. And then you now say, okay, you don't treat me well, let me go. But you say, no, I won't let you go. So it's an abusive relationship. But what I'm, I, I want us to talk about now is not really to say, I'm here to speak for the East or for Igbos. I want us to look at this thing holistically. What are the things that are keeping us down and keeping us um, keeping our country down like this? Tell me if I'm wrong in my observation that it's because you want to pull down, push down your brother instead of lifting and uplifting. Okay, uh, let me quickly let me quickly uh, drop in there. I without the, without maybe sounding, I don't, I don't want you to sound because no, no matter what you say, Uzo, um, whatever statement you make by your name. People will already think that you already have a, you have a bias. 
Mm. You understand? So I don't want us to go from that. I won't want to go from that point of view. I know that if I speak like you, uh, they might want to listen because my name is Akin. Do you understand? Uh -huh. But but if you speak the way you're speaking, they might not want to. Nobody might want to listen because they already feel you have an inherent uh, bias. But the truth about it is that uh, what you said is actually the truth, or it is not far from the truth. If it is not completely the truth, it is not far from the truth. Let me say this: eh? Nigeria is a very very difficult country. To grow nigeria is a very difficult country to develop nigeria is a very difficult country to inspire why not because we lack inspiration not because we do not this as a country we do not desire growth or development but because from the onset nigeria has been worse let me not say has been but was and has been too yeah was a socio-economic, no, uh, political, economic uh, design of the British. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nigeria was, was never meant to be united. That's the truth. Uh, some people were supposed to benefit from the consistent disunity of Nigeria. Now, that, that is one thing. What what we need to ask ourselves, could, could it have been overcome? Yes, it could have been overcome. If people, if, if our forefathers uh, that we so hail all the time, if they had the foresight to see that, look, I am not different from these, my co-ethnic brothers. I am not different from them. They have their, they have their area of expertise. They have their comparative advantages, uh, advantage and advantages, and I have mine. All we need to do to build or to forge a very uh, strong country or strong nation is to synergize our efforts in a very trustworthy, united way. But what, what has happened over the years, and it speaks volume of the the level of disunity of distrust that has been sown into the nigerian polity and the nigerian people and uh, uh, the leaders are always using it for their own political gain you understand both political and economic gain now coming down to the issue of uh, whether we try to bring ourselves down i don't think that is uh can be said of person to person. I have a lot of Igbo friends, and I know Uzo, you have a lot of Yoruba friends. I have some Ausa friends. I mean, some I met while I was seven. But what I say, it is not from person to person. It is be, it is more likely on the political psyche level. Because when you hear something being noised in your ears for years, and there is you you hardly hear any contrary thing any uh positive contrary thing to that there's a tendency that it will maybe take 30 40 percent of your thoughts and your action so that is what has happened politicians have used the ethnic sentiments uh within the three people uh, main groups in nigeria to foster their own agenda, to disunite the people so that maybe they will get their ethnic brothers to support them and the other really don't care about the other ethnic groups. You understand? But that's the thought of, but the average person, the average Nigerian who is Igbo, who is Yoruba, does not actually have that feeling, even though at the back of their mind, 30, 40 percent, because they've been told, they've been told that story over the years, they've kind of leaned towards it one way in safety that what if this is true so but there's it, no redemption for us so we're never going to get out of this thing oh no we can we can but the the, the problem we is with that is is the fact that the people who sow the seed 
they are not going to go away. And that's what people should recognize. UK is milking Nigeria. UK, the United Kingdom, you understand? It's milking Nigeria because of the kind of leadership that we have had since independence. That's why they will succeed. But if we had, another thing you need to ask yourself is that how much of their fans are in the country for the fact that even if you have, quote unquote, a nationalistic leader, a national hero, somebody who is Nigeria centric, even if you have that person, whether the, the death of their fans in the country, the, the, the honey pots of Nigeria, and the political system of Nigeria, whether those fans will allow that person to even survive for even a year to begin the course of reversing okay. the negativity that has been instituted over 60 years. So those are the things you need to... Because let me give you a very good example. During the last election, I was a major supporter of Peter Obi. Who? One, yes, I was. Okay. I, and I am, I'm still I. You understand me? I never wanted a Tinubu to get near the office because I worked with them at the Lagos State level and I knew the atrocities they were committing. Okay. Oh, knew... while, we're, while we're at this, here is um, our other panelists does not does not see this government as sees this government as a good government. And that's actually no. why he's that's actually why he's here. Yeah, it, it, I'm thinking that maybe yeah. there's some things that we don't know. Um, let, me, let me learn so that he doesn't get the wrong impression of I am not a I am not a oh I don't like this government for the sake of I don't like this government. I knew some of the things they perpetrated in Lagos. See, with the revenue that Lagos State, let me give you a very good, concise example of what I'm trying to talk about. And, and that shows the intentions of a people, of, of leadership. If you look at all the revenues that have been generated in Lagos over the last 20, 24 years, if they employed even 70% of those revenues, in developing Lagos, Lagos will be com will be competing with Dubai. What what happens is that in a lot of the projects in Lagos, they use almost ten times what it will require to do it in uh, ten times what it will require to do it in other African countries. Like if a project will cost a hundred million dollars in kenya it will cost one billion dollars in lagos and that was the way it was now from the day from the first day and that they continued that way because somebody has held the state by the truth and that that over the years has been tinumbo now lagos has not uh developed the way it was supposed and the same thing and i'll give you an example call me back in five years and tell me about the Lagos uh, Calabar uh, uh, project, the one they are doing, they started about uh, a few months ago. In five years, in 10 years, they are still going to be talking about that project, and it wouldn't have even done 30%. And that's the way they are. And what you would see is that at the end, by the time they even get to 50%, they would have spent more than five times the amount of money they said that project would take, even at the beginning. Yes, you can say inflation or this or that. But the truth about it, even if you measure it economically, you will see that at the end of the day, one, the project will never meet uh, the, the third date. Two, they would have spent 10, 20 times what they are supposed to. And that is because that is where they're building their corruption from. And truth about it, the Lagos, is, Lagos State uh, 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 system is one of the most corrupt systems I won't say in Nigeria, maybe because there are many states that are corrupt, but in Africa, in terms of developing cities, Lagos is one of them. The amount of money that has been sunk in Lagos in the last 20 years will build Lagos five times. But and it's the same thing that has that has they've, that they've now transported to the federal it's level. That's the main reason, yeah. Because I felt 
Peter Obi would better would have better managed our resources. We needed somebody to manage our resources, not somebody to spend like we have all the money because Nigeria does not. Okay, for instance, right now we are in a very dire situation, and that's why we have the protests. Yeah. But yes, but um the person who is in power now is Tinubu. And before he went into government, we we the ones who are not supporters of Tinubu believe yeah. that he would carry what he did when he was governor and what we've yeah. known him for all these years, would he would carry that into the presidency. But when I speak with someone like Mr. Olu here, he tells me that it's a lot of propaganda and that propaganda. Some of those things are falsities and people just want to post and write and say negative things about the government instead of giving the government a chance to work. He also says that because over the years it's been different governments doing all these different horrible things and so Tinubu is not going to be able to change things overnight. But those of us who are looking at it from the other side, we're not thinking that it's not because he can't change things overnight, because nobody can change things overnight. We're just looking at it that this is somebody who has always been like the rest of those people who don't have the country, the interests of the country in, in mind, and that he will go there and just be his selfish self. Because the moment that you have someone who actually cares, they will know that they will begin to put in policies that will make oh, Oh, let him let the man speak now. Let him speak. He's here. Let him speak. All right. Oh, do you want to tell us? Yes. Okay. So yeah. First, let me just quickly um, address the earlier issue you talked about uh, about people pulling down each other uh, in the country. Uh, I think one of the key things that will help to work in that country, and it's a it's a reality that I tell uh, um, most people is every tribe needs to own up to the fact that we all have our own shortcomings right you know we i engage a lot of people online and when they talk about things uh for example the southeast people most of the time they blame the southwest and the north say they are doing this they're doing that and i keep asking yes there was uh during the civil war there were issues i mean it was a terrible genocide you know, millions of people that died. But are you saying that the Saudi is not also guilty of some things? You know, everybody, that's where true reconciliation comes into play. We talk about it in personal relationships too. It's not about I am right or you're wrong. You know, there's a place in Calabar, uh, in, yeah, I think Calabar, there's, they call it, um, it's a little Oweri. I can't remember right now that it was renamed during the war. And that tribe, they were almost wiped out by uh, the Southeasterners, you know, those are atrocities too that happened. So I'm not justifying the fact that it happened to, uh, I mean, what this particular tribe did or what that particular tribe did was wrong. Everybody needs to own up. And you talked about uh, that they're pulling down the Southeast, that seaports, and the truth of the matter is there's no seaports in the Southeast. Southeast is landlocked. Mm -hmm. The seaports are in the South South uh, regions, uh, Southwest. So that's where the seaport is. So those kind of information, misinformation also helps to fan the flame of mm -hmm. all these issues. So everybody needs to own up and say, okay, yes, we're wrong. How can we move forward? Not a blame game time. Because like uh, the constitution in Nigeria that we're talking about that is bad, it was um, spearheaded by someone from the Southeast. And I told someone, I said, once the not tasted the cookie and it was nice, they stayed on it. If it was the Southwest also that had that opportunity, they would have taken that advantage. So that is how, uh, you know, we got to that stage. So moving to, um, to, to the Nigeria, to Tinubu, yes, Lagos State, you know, is, uh, I, I wouldn't want to go into the argument of the corruption yeah. and all that. We know so that like sometimes that. it exists, it exists in, in that country, but we cannot also, rule out the fact that Lagos is one of the best is the best run state in Nigeria right now. The civil services are the best in that country. I mean, the best run in the country. There's a lot of the system in, the, in Lagos that is working. And I also put this out. There is no city in the world that grows at the rate that Lagos grows that would not suffer. There is no amount of money that you put pour into that city that will make it look uh, good. 
Dubai, we talk about what is the population, what is the growth rate. Imagine you have a washroom in your house, a bathroom in your house, and that is meant for two people, and 500 people use it. And you, you say, okay, you, you renovate it every now and then. It's it, with the amount of time, something it would give. So the rate of population growth in Lagos is, a, is number one, it's an issue. It's, it will, it's definitely telling on that city, but cannot also say that uh, there's a lot, the investment in that state has not, you know, really shown. There's a lot of system in place that is working in that in that in that state, which is one of the best in that in the country. So for me, the reason why I support a man like him is because replicate something like that in Nigeria, and we see that when he came in, you know, he's not spend one year in office. The first thing, and like um, the speaker that first said, Nigeria is a very difficult place. If you it will it will bring Obama and Justin Trudeau of Canada everybody together into Nigeria to rule today, they are in the democratic form uh, setup, they will fail because the way this they, because the way the country is set up, everything has been rotten from day one. Now is dislodging. He wanted he wants to dislodge the uh, forex traders. Okay, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let, can can we just go back just a little bit because of the way yeah. everything has been set up? And we're talking about yeah. the, the forex um, trade. I'm going to go back to that. Everything yeah. has been set up, and that was because it was deliberately set up to favor another country that's external to Nigeria. And they did that deliberately. Right. And if you right. and I, the common man, none of us, um, we're not into politics. I'm not into politics. You're not into politics. If we if we recognize right. that, then definitely the people, the, the people in power, the people, the people who are always in politics and in the corridors of politics, they know this much. So isn't that where we're supposed to start? Isn't that where we're supposed to start to understand that this thing, the idea that was planted in the first place, that um, this country should be like this, and that these people should be yeah. the ruling party, all those ideas, yeah. that were the things that we should dislodge, because until we're yeah. able to be on a, on a level playing field, then we're going to continue yeah. having these problems. We're not going yeah. to encourage people to, to use their strengths. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, it's easier said than done. The West rules the world. I was talking to a colleague of mine who is white. It was, we were talking, I mean, we were actually driving together and he said, um, something he knows, knows is that if we're talking about the Russia, Ukraine war, and it was like, for them, for there to be a problem in a particular country, all they need to just do is just throw a little bit of propaganda into it. They have, they have, they have that machinery that they do, the West does. The West. Um, recently, David Ondain just posted uh, posted something on Twitter about somebody sending him something to write, uh, uh, like a like a, a report on Dangote Refinery about it's not being green. That he would. So the summary of the thing that he wanted to do was to discredit Dangote Refinery from the West, and he played along just to know who are the people that were at the back of all these things, and it were people from uh, all these Western countries. Not right now, Dangote refinery is going to affect a lot of a lot of refineries in the in, in Europe are going to close down if that refinery goes on goes on uh, goes live and starts supplying uh, refineries. So these people are there; they know what to do. We saw what they did to Venezuela. We saw what, what, they, what has our government so, got to do with? Like, if our government is um, there, Dangote refinery is there, and, and there are external factors, yeah. how are they controlling? Yeah. Uh, so that means that our government is actually bowing to the pressure from the external factors so that the refinery doesn't function. So it's all about politics. It's all about politics. You have to be very, very, uh, how would I put it, political in your, you can't be, except you want to be uh, Russia or China. Right now, they are just discovering things, how they can do away with the West. Russia just discovered it with the Russian Ukraine war, and China is also so it takes a lot of time. Nigeria doesn't, it's not even part of the uh, <laughs> the power blocks that can you know easily do that, right? So sometimes it takes it, it, it's not about just waking up and say, okay, I want to cut off the 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 the, the West from our peers of Nigeria. You, it's not it's not something that we can do. You know, but just it, like that. And so it becomes worse when we now have a man like Tinubu, who it's, yeah. it appears because of everything that we heard about him, it appears that now he's in a precarious position where he'd better do as they say. If they say jump, he has to say how high, because otherwise 
I mean, if so what has, has it, what has it done? What has, has it done it, right now? That looks like that looks like he's uh, doing the beating of the West. What has it done right now? That looks like he's doing the beating of the West. That, that looks like he's doing the beating of the West. There's, I don't think there's anything. I mean, he's oh, not. He has. Oh, uh, he, he's allowing. Oh, please, he's okay, hold on. I, I, I want to. Okay. I want to. It might not be. It might not be very obvious. You understand me. Right. When the issue of I don't want us to dwell so much on Dangote on the Dangote issue because it's actually multifaceted. Dangote is up against, uh, as I said in the last program that I was on, on this program when I was here the last time, I told you that uh, the issue of Dangote is actually highly multifaceted. Is is fighting many enemies from different directions. Is fighting in the, the oil boys in Nigeria, and as you said. Is also fighting the international uh, refining conglomerates who benefit so much in exporting refined products to Nigeria at uh, exorbit at exorbitant well, so prices. You even heard that Tinubu, Tinubu oh, now um, hold on. in Malta. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, hold on. Let me let me say this. Eh? The the fact that Tinubu is a player through its proxies, you know. You want to agree or not that Tinubu is a player in the oil industry uh, through its proxies? I I, I know uh, as someone who has seen documents that many people in Nigeria have never seen in their lives. I am not going to share some of it. I was uh, I was consultant archivist to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, I I worked with a lot of uh, multinationals in Nigeria over the last 20, 25 years. The Documents end up in my hand that a lot of a lot of Nigerians will never see in their lifetime. I want to say that uh, uh, it is not very easy, and it is not very flattering when you have your president as a player, as a major player, who is proxies in international trade where there's some measure of uh, uh, confusion. The 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 many fights that dangote even when i heard it was going to float a a refinery i said well i hope and i said this almost seven eight years ago i hope you are not finally putting your hand where all your wealth will go and then it will most likely disappear that was the first thing i said now a lot of people are benefiting from the incongruency in the nigerian um um uh, what do you call it? system Dangote benefited from it in some right. in, in some uh, at some levels, but a lot of pe those people who have benefit who have been benefiting from that incongruency and inconsistency in the Nigerian uh, policy, and are the ones who are at Dangote's neck because they are not ready to let go, both internationally and locally. Do you understand? And that is now. About where whether Tinubu what, what when you ask the situation uh, the question that what did he do? did he do anything to suggest that is aligning no he doesn't need to do anything someone just he, sent a message oh, saying hold that on, oh, seventeen old blocks hold on hold on hold on the the people under him are the ones doing the attack because if you will let if you will let the people under you who are supposed to be employed by you as the president CEC of Nigeria. To speak for almost three, four months against something that's supposed to liberate the country. And they were speaking consistently and downgrading all the efforts of Dangote's uh, refinery. And you only came out uh, three or four months or five months after to say, okay, they should sell uh, crude oil to him in Naira, which does not, for me, does not make any difference. It's all, it's all, a, it's all a matter of. Uh, foreign exchange, the level of exchange. The truth about it is that the fact that Tinubu is a player in that industry <laughs> makes it so problematic for him to even be, to, to adjudicate and create some measure of transparency with his government. And that is what Uzo is also saying that, look, when you have a man who who, so to say, has some measure of skeletons in his cupboard. Maybe oh, in his, may, yes, maybe in his past dealings. He might not be doing anything regarding that now. But 
the West have the West must not have anything to hold against you. The moment they do, they turn you into a puppet. And it was one of the reasons why some of us also did not want him. Not because we in fact he did have brain. Of course he had brain. But some of the things he did in Lagos, even with the fact that they were they were they were, they were the system was corrupt. At least there was some ingenuity. But certain things we needed somebody who could not be held. Now we have somebody who can be held. How can people under you be speaking against an, uh, uh, a project that's supposed to liberate Nigeria? Country. Yeah. And then you didn't say anything. You didn't call them to order. You didn't caution them. You didn't reprimand. Nothing. That is a sign. And it's, it, it, it might look minute. But in the real in the real context of what we're talking about, it is huge. Okay. Um, well, you know that, I think I think that 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 is all um leadership styles are different. Wow. Another leader might come on, online and you know and you know blow up everything. The fact that the Dangote is also playing on the sentiments of a lot of Nigerians, but another angle where we view it, there's a lot of other there's another another school of thought where um, Dangote also has been fingered that you, he, he is trying to play uh, a game that is going to send every other businesses packing, and those people too want to fight back. We say it's a downstream sector; it's a, it's a sector whereby uh, it's uh, how will I put it? They use the word I, I want to. Uh, it's an open market kind of situation, but you want to make it look as if every other every other uh, marketer should be getting uh, products from you. You are mandating uh, NNPC to supply you crude. But NNPC already has contract also with some other foreign uh, people. So everything can just happen, you know, at the snap of a finger to you for you uh, uh, because you have a, a big right. Yes, the refinery is going to liberate, liberate Nigeria. It's going to do a lot of uh, things for Nigeria. But we should also look at it from the other angle. Yes, that guy that spoke, the NNPC guy, we know that Dangote is going to take a lot of them out of business. Definitely. Because they have been, right now, many of them have, so they have woken up now and they say Potako Refinery will start producing because they don't want Dangote to take all the business. So it's a, it's a family, somebody says it's a family affair between the northerners. And as a president, also note that one thing. The president cannot also come out very hard. This is all. This is also politics because he knows that he needs many of these guys when the time comes for uh, election or when. So it's all about politics. We should always understand the game of politics. That's why we say somebody says, "Oh, this guy is trying to be a politician." Politicians are not like this straightforward. If it's a, a dictator or if it's a, an authoritarian rule, yes, you can do whatever you like. For politics, you have to bend to the interest of many people around you. Well, well you see not what that, that means you are... then? You see what that means? What? what that means is that you are more interested in occupying the position. What is the point of occupying the position when the, the job for the position will now not be done? Yeah. So it, it, anywhere, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in no. the world. I know, US, but since, US, our country Canada. Is crumbling, since our country is crumbling, Sorry? since our country yeah. is crumbling, now is not the time for yeah. that. Why would you struggle to get into that position? Like it's like okay. it's like all those it's like all those all those people who call themselves pastors, the fake ones. Why okay. are you not just living okay. a layman's life on the streets? Why do you go and take a position where you cannot uphold what is expected of you? Okay, let, let me let me give you a very let me give you a very good, good example, my friend. Eh? What I say what I what I say to people is that eh? yeah. the problem with Nigeria. And that's where we keep. And now, that, that was what we wanted to change. We wanted a paradigm shift. The problem with Nigeria is that we have not had enough Nigerians in Nigeria, and it is more so in leadership. You do not, you do not have any business in leadership if the interest of Nigeria does not come first irrespective of whose horse is God. And that is where our problem is. And that is why Nigerian leaders sell Nigeria out. All the time. Yes, all the time. 
Ma quick please. question to you. Quick, quick question to you. If you yeah. if you are the president, if you become the president today, yeah, what will, will you what, what will you do? Will you dislodge all the interest? No, no, want? no. It is not about dislodging the interest. The man at NNPC, hold on, hold on. The man okay. at NNPC yeah. works for you. Okay. You, call, you don't need to call him out in public. You call him after that. For, he, he made about four statements in three months. After that first statement, you call him to order. You tell him, if, and you have the right as his employer, that if you say what you have just said is is not in the interest of nigeria if you say that again you are out of your position he will shut up no matter the interest that he's trying to protect i know he has interest because they make money from he has friends who make money from from what dangote refinery is now going to block we all know that right. i am not a supporter right. i'm a, i'm not a supporter of dangote i'm a supporter of what he is doing what is what his project means to nigeria and right. nigerians that's what i mean i'm not i'm not for i'm not a supporter of dangote i never like what happened when he more like monopolized uh the certain sectors of the nigerian economy i'm not but this particular right. one is in the interest of nigeria and for the sake of nigeria a president who is not who is not uh uh what do you call who is not uh I won't say bot, but who is not a major player in the industry will say to him, oh boy, hold your lips. What you're saying is, is actually anti-Nigeria. So shut up. Mm. Yes, shut up. I don't want to hear a word from. Then, two, what you ask yourself, under the APC government, so many people were, so there were many licenses given for modular refineries. Right. For eight years, nobody was given a crude allocation under the APC government that Tinubu said he will continue their policies. Do you understand? Now, all those licenses, why, if, if you say, okay, you're trying not to, you're trying not to make uh, Dangote be, to hold monopolistic power and all of that, why, prelude to when he came on stream, why not give allocation of crude to those modular refineries and make it contingent upon their being able to show in good faith okay this is our refinery but if you say okay if you, if you show us your refinery if you built your completed your uh imported your equipment three months after you you will give you the certificate uh of uh of uh, uh will certify you for being ready you get your uh crude or whether one month whether two months whether three months None of that happened. You guys waited until Dangote got the refiners ready and then you started to play politics. No, you should not. Don't play politics with Nigerian lives. It is the life of Nigerians that is actually now at stake. Because yeah, the people are suffering. It, it has to be that way because we don't really have somebody who cares. And Olu, yeah. I, I was, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted you to tell us that maybe there are some things that were not, um, understanding or we're not noticing you know that you're privy to because or maybe because you say you said to me that a lot of people have a bias which prevents them from seeing the positives of the government now for instance in the past um a few minutes ago you talked about the east or the south not having ports right you said we're landlocked so is it is it really true that we couldn't have had ports in the south instead of having a yeah. lot of things just monopolized in Lagos for imports and exports. There, there's refinery in uh, on the other courts. There's refinery in... The uh, I'm talking about the ports. Uh, oh, okay. The ports. The ports. Seaport. Seaport. Yes. Yeah, seaport. There's refinery in Delta and, yeah, and uh, on there. So it's, I don't know um, what you're saying that... Um, so at, under the military, you know, it was focused on Apapa, but I think under Buari, they started, they opened up uh, the one at Oni, and right now, I think it's, 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 I think they got their shipments shortly before Buari left office. They started having some shipments to that point. So, 
I don't think uh, Papa, they are trying, even trying to decongest Papa right now. They are trying to make sure that other ports, and also they opened up dry ports all over the country so that, you know, there will be ease of business. It, the Southeasterners that say they import a lot of uh, yes. things into Papa. Yeah. Okay, why not direct us to own it and it, at least for okay. all the shipments to Southeast if that makes things easy. Is that want to say something. What, what, what I wanted to say was that uh, you see the issue of reports is also, it's also a very laughable matter. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the man who is your president now, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people might not know. Um, I had a lot of people at the uh, Ports Authority then. My my stepfather was, uh, was the managing director of uh, Orin for, for some years. So I knew while I was while I, while I, just that was immediately after I left university, and I knew a lot of the politics that were ongoing. It, it started before Tinubu, but it really heightened the moment Tinubu got into power. Especially that time he had his fight with Obasanjo. Do you know the fight between the federal government and its Lagos state government in? In trying to uh, di divert cargo, you know there was a time that they said, "Okay, if the, if the final destination of a cargo is to a, to a place like Onitsha, the two ports that it will it will birth, those cargos will birth is actually Porakot and One." Right. You understand? But right. this your man, this your man who is now the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, was in the forefront okay. because the port is a major generating revenue, not directly to Lagos State, but there are also other taxes that are accrued by the okay. fact that con uh, uh, containers okay. and depots okay. were situated okay. in Lagos, and it was okay. aiding the revenue generation of Lagos. Which constituted to be fifty-two percent of IGR that Lagos was boasting of. Okay. This same man, if they say there was, there's a major problem with congestion of cargo in Lagos right now. This your president is one of the number one causes of it, because he fought tooth and nail to ensure that the policy of that cargo diversion, maybe about twenty years ago never worked okay. a lot okay. of by now what you would have heard was that a 40 percent of the cargo coming to lagos because they were still going to end up in the southeast where okay. through for court and on a port he fought to okay. nail to ensure that those things were not based on the fact that he wanted to generate revenue now quick question to me quick question to you sorry yeah. So it, it, 20 years ago, I'm sure it was uh, Obasanjo that was in power then, right? It was PDP, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. he was fighting for his own states for revenue to stay in the state. What happens to the governors of other regions? Were they sleeping? I would do the same if I was Lagos State Governor. No, you, you. So what do you, what do you think? What do you think? No, of no, logic? no. You see, no, no. The issue basically, you cannot, you cannot be too greedy to the level of gluttony. Uh, to be honest, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, you cannot be too greedy. You see, you see a bucket of food that would serve twenty people, and you decide to hold it onto yourself, and then you feed yourself to the point where you start to vomit. That is stupidity. <laughs> no, because you must know what your infrastructural capacity can take. Right. What was the what was the width? What was the, what was the capacity of Lagos to handle what what size of cargo? Can Lagos State handle one the ports, well, the yeah. roads, the roads? If isn't not because that, of federal that, government intervention, if all the, okay, if not because okay. of federal government intervention, all the roads in Lagos right. would have become bad. Yes. Federal government intervention. What, what did federal government intervene in? Where did federal government intervene in Lagos roads? How many places? How many oh. roads? <laughs> okay, the Amapa, Land Bridge, the, Amapa, yeah, the, Amapa was the expressway that they concretized. That was Dangote. That was for Dangote. It was Through Dangote who? that did it. Through who? Huh? Through who? <laughs> In partnership with <laughs> who? In uh, partnership with the, the federal government. In partnership with the federal <laughs> government, not Lagos State government. Yeah. 
No Lagos State. What I'm trying to say is that you cannot be greedy to the level of gluttony to the point of vomiting. See? And that is what I'm trying to say. I'm not, I don't have anything against uh, uh, trying to get revenue. Anyway, 80% of the revenue is always stolen anyway. So that's what I'm because uh, look at the amount look at the amount of money they used in uh, building the railway. The amount of money they used in building the railway with that the one they built now, they just completed over 15 years ago. I started over 15 years ago, would have built like seven or eight of it in different parts of the state. So that's those are the things I'm talking about. Right. On the on the books of uh, on the books of uh, China um, uh, China Railway, it was one one hundred eighty one million dollars. On the books of Lagos, it was one one point five billion dollars. Right. Almost ten times the amount. Those are mm. those are the institutional corruption I'm talking about, and that's what they okay. almost carry to the federal level. I don't have any problem with being ingenious about, but are you doing it? Are we growing what we're supposed to do in 10 years? We're using 50 years to do it. What we're supposed if we're supposed to have 10 of these, we're having one. That's development. Right. Those are the measurement of development. It's not that you built a railway line. No. It's what effects. Imagine if those kind of railway lines, there are about six running one from one end to the other in Lagos. Do you can you can you imagine the transportation system in the states? That's, not, that's what I'm saying. It's not that you built one. I'm not impressed. And you used 15 years to build it. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, so I was hoping that you would you would um, tell us, you know, um, Olu, so that right now it looks like a hopeless, it is a hopeless situation. And I remember saying that, uh, I remember you saying that a lot of the things that we're complaining about are just it's just propaganda that we're just making a lot of noise and and castigating the government because we don't want to see good in the government. So this protest now, do you see how it's looking? Even people who don't want to participate in the protests are being um, attacked for not participating in the protests. But the protests are going on because people are not happy with the government. Right? Yes. yes. Or are they going or is it is that also propaganda? Uh, people coming out of no, your uh, houses and destroying uh -huh. it's it, it, it's it's um how will i put it the the i remember the program one of the programs that i when tinubu was about to come in and i said so, something i said it will not there will not be um uh, what's it called icing on the cake immediately it comes in and it's going to be there's no pain, there's no gain without pain it's definitely going to happen you know some but we still had i still had this conversation with some friends and some of were saying that he shouldn't have removed the uh, when he was when, when he removed the subsidy he should have you know held back on the forex uh issue forex subsidy and i said when is the best time and nobody could answer the question so it's the, it's always easy for us most of us and on the sidelines sometimes to you know talk about analyze government and all that and it sometimes when you get there I think Ruben Abate also made that statement one time when after he left office, he wrote an article. And he said, when you get there, sometimes there are things that you you know you never <laughs> imagined that you will see that you will see. So he, the the protest is justified. Everybody needs to um, also voice their concern. But we know also that many of many many of most of these protests was instigated by people who are still uh, nursing that uh loss that they had in the last uh election there will always there will always be there will always be people that will start a fire you know definitely people i'm not saying people are not suffering i'm not saying people are not angry and all that but you know somebody has to you know start the fire of of protest yes that that's the but if you want to if you want to be a protest leader you know show your face lead the protest be at the forefront. Don't call it a, a day of rage. I mean, what are you, what what is all that supposed to mean? You know, protest, go there, stand in, in there, and block entrances. And one of the things that people like us always say is this protest that we're talking about against the federal government. Every state should lock down their state. This is not about the federal government anymore. We need to be very, very, very logical in our, our argument. 
since subsidy was removed, state allocation has increased, increased by over 45%. States were given over 500 billion so, uh, stuff for uh, palliatives. How many people are holding state governors uh, um, accountable? The, the NLC fought federal government to stand still on minimum wage. How many states can pay 70,000 naira uh, in, in our states? How many people are fighting their governors? It is always federal government. Uh, local governments are autonomy. The federal government has said okay, we want local governments to be autonomous. State governors are emperors. State governors in Nigeria are even more powerful than the president. Because they are saying no. Nobody's fighting their governor on that. Everything is. So a friend said something. They said the military mindset that we had back then is still what is playing in Nigeria. We all look at the center. Nobody remember, knows uh, things about who is uh, uh, handling each state. By the time we start holding our state governors responsible, uh, um, accountable, there will be also a lot of uh, drastic changes. You are a governor is responsible for bringing investments to their state, not the federal government. The federal government too has its own play, its own place to, uh, its own parts to play, but a lot lies on the federal or on the state government. Um, I was watching something on 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 on, on what's it called on Facebook today, and I think by Elsa's income um, revenue that was allocated to them in uh, in August, you know, over a hundred something billion. I mean, what are they doing with it? What is the what is the size of by Elsa? What, are, what is the government doing with, the, with those funds? So when we begin to have these conversations, yes, our energy will not own. During elections, we are all focused on presidential election. Nobody cares about uh, governorship, uh, local government or senators. Everybody's always president. We want, if we bring Obama and uh, Justin Trudeau of Canada today to Nigeria, it will still not work. Why? Because those states, all the states of federation, we need uh, everybody to start holding the governors accountable. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry to so I I wanted to round up because I needed to leave. I still have about oh, an hour yeah, and yeah, have yeah, to yeah. travel. Uh, I wanted to quickly oh, okay. round up. I think the problem uh, Uzo, to allude to you what can't you drive. Said, you can't drive. You can't drive and talk. No. Ah, uh, here yeah. the police can't you <laughs> now. Now while oh, yeah, yeah, go, that's, go, that's, that's, go. that's why I had to park. <laughs> now what that's I want right. to say. What I want to say is that. Uh, Nigeria itself is a lie. The system, yeah, the system yes, will run. Hold on, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The system we 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 run is a lie. Let me tell you why the system we run is a lie. The system we run before the military rule is far better, and that's what we need to revert to. And I say this until we revert to that, we will just be going in a cycle. Right around in a circle. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know why I say so. Huh? Yeah. No. Even the body. Even the body. Even the body. The way. The way. The, the, the way God who created us created our body. Uh -huh. We function as parts. Uh -huh. And we all contribute to the body, to the center, the body. That is the way. Even we as human beings were created that way. And everything, even if you look at the tree, the tree was created that way. Everything, the nutrients come from the soil. Mm. Yeah, and every everything is... Now, the, the problem with Nigeria is that we are trying to run the reverse of nature in our political and economic system. You can't cheat nature. Yes. Can't cheat See, nature. until we revert back to the, whether we now call it states or regions or whatever, maybe a couple of states will make a region, but they will still exist. The issue basically is that what the military did to Nigeria was an aberration and was a disservice to our unity and, and it, it, it more like worked against it. Now, what we need to go back to, and I say this without any doubt, that we need to go back to where the regions, where the roots feed the center. If we do that, it, there will, a lot of a lot of attention will be taken away from the center. How do you expect the attention not to be on the center when that's where the only pot is, where everything comes from? But if okay, if if we're generating money in my state, huh, and we all need to work out in the state to generate the hundred billion, 
and then we give 30 billion to the center. We know 70 billion is our own, and we all work for it. Do you understand me? And I'm closer to the governor than to the president. Oh, it is likely that I will hold the governor responsible. But when I know that, oh, the center is where the honey pot is, and that's where it streams down. Do you understand me? Now, the issue basically is that we need to reverse engineer our, our political system, our structure, that what, what some people call restructuring. If we don't do that, we are joking with ourselves. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Uh, We're going yeah, to be going from one... Funding. Hold on, hold on. We're going to be going from one yeah. strife to the other. And without, yeah. with, without, without uh, peace, eh, there cannot be unity. Yeah. Okay, add this to your comments, please. Someone said, no matter the system we, 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 we adopt in Nigeria, that it's a yeah. people problem, not... Uh, so what do you say about that? Because if we no. adopt Canadian system or the re no, it's no, always no. A people problem. What do you? It, okay, it, it is a what we have is a system. Yes, we have a people problem, but what we have predominantly is a system problem. We we are running the wrong system, especially for for a multi ethnic country like Nigeria. You see, if we are not multi ethnic, you understand me? Yes, it might be manageable. But because the reason why we also need that restructuring, where we need to come from the roots, is because we are multi-ethnic. Yes, we are multi-ethnic. So you can't rule that out. And for as long as we know, for the last 40 years, 50 years, it hasn't been, it hasn't been contributing. May I, I can even reframe it. We are multi-ethnic ethnic, and we are very conscious of it. Yes. And we are aware. And we're that one no and we're aware. Let and nobody I'm just deceive us. The human, uh, yeah, we're most going to bring in the human angle. There is no way that anybody can exist with another person and be okay to know that I am being relegated, right? Or, or, or for me to not even exercise what I have, I'm able to do this and I am um gagged. It just can't work. It's an unhealthy, it's a toxic relationship. Let, let be straight, let's be straightforward about it. Let an Igbo man be the premier of the eastern region. Let a Yoruba man be the premier of the uh, western region. Let an Osama be the premier of the... Uh, let us diverge from the roots. You will see that at a point, it won't matter who, who, is, who is the president. That's the truth. It won't matter because we are, all, su we are, all, supply we are all supplying the center. And we all have our percentages that we're supplying. So it doesn't matter. What matters is what we make. It's so what we, we need to tell ourselves the truth. So we, that the is the man, truth. we, the common man, should stop supporting these people because they actually know. We're, we're, yeah. we're seeing it as if they don't know. They know. Let's not let's not let's not uh, let's not deceive ourselves. That's why I say we are telling. We are, Nigeria is a country of lies. We are telling ourselves lies. We are telling ourselves to do what we know will never work. Has never worked. Even led to a civil war. Let us tell ourselves the truth. We are not saying divide the country. Nigeria has its, every every part of Nigeria has its strength. The, the best way to utilize those strengths is let them function on their own and contribute to the center. That is the only way. But say one center wants to come and control all the regions and then make we are not productive. The East is not working at, at its best. The West is not working at its best. The North is not working at its best. That is the truth. How do we work at our best? Let's... Okay, we are very ethnic people. Okay, no problem. But that can still be used positively. Because I, I don't know how anybody would change the ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, sensitivity in Nigeria. It's strong. It's not possible. So, what, how do... The only way you utilize that is to make them in that ethnic sensitivity to be productive on their own. But let there be in the constitution that whatever you produce, a certain percentage comes to the federal. And then what comes to the federal, we will use in doing things that has federal presence. That's all. Any other thing, we're just joking. We are, my brother, we are. 
I, I, I lived lived long in Nigeria to know, being part of a political process enough to know that nah, yeah. nah, it won't work. Yeah. I, I will always speak from the human angle. There is nothing once you are living a lie, ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. You can't to survive. You just be um, what is it? Leaning on crutches. You are never going to be healthy. That's what I got it. I got it. Nothing has to go. I gotta go. My brother, it's nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Well done. Take care. I'm, in, Ontario, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in Ontario, Canada. Thank oh, you nice. nice. I'm a safe drive. Yeah. All right. Uh. Take All care. right Bye. Good speed. Yeah, Good speed. I will. Yeah. All right. So this morning, I saw somebody post something that really hurt me. I felt, I felt hurt by it. Person posted about. In fact, I've seen two today posting about, one of them was um, about Fanny Coyote and the woman that he married, the Igbo woman that he married. And another one was also about a, a, an Igbo woman who married a Yoruba man. And these people were saying that Igbo people should not marry Yoruba people, you know? And then people started to um, abuse. You can never get anything good from a Yoruba man. This is that, that, you know? and. All this doesn't make any sense. It's the same as those people who come and say all men are this or all women are that. It, it doesn't make sense. So, and this is why we will now, do you know what, the, what this means? These people are going to bring up their children, talk to all their friends with all this poison. And it is not yes. true. Any woman who has been hurt by a man who goes around saying that all men are this can teach everybody around her, every other young woman around her, the lies. And those things are not true. And so if that's what we have in the country, but they're observing it because right now we now have, when we had Buhari there as the president, you saw the way that he didn't deal with Boko Haram. When now that we have Tinubu, you see the way that he's bringing all his family members and everywhere is Yoruba, 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 as if the country belongs to Yoruba land. We're not going anywhere. How can a father be the one who is scattering his family? Do you understand? We're not... Uh, it's just more. So more how, where, where, where is he bringing all his Yoruba, Yoruba? Oh, somebody, somebody. Wait, oh, am I lying? Am I lying? And so how? Where, where did you? What did? What statistics? Where did you get the statistics from? Where did I get the statistics from? Okay, so we have a caller. Hi, caller. Yes. Thank you for calling Hi. in. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. I've been watching your program for some time now, and I'm really impressed. Okay. On the uh, topic that you guys are talking about, actually, I took special interest in today's topic. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Akin, that's the guy that was on 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 red. Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, Olu is the one that is on white. Yes. Hi Olu. Hi Akin. Um, I've listened attentively to what you guys are actually uh will be talking about. Um, and I'm quite impressed. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, um, I don't know what to say, but let me put it this way. In as much as Nigeria, the way Nigeria is today, someone would say that if you don't know where the rain started beating you, you will never know where is going to end. Mm -hmm. Our problem, when did all of us, I don't know, consciously or unconsciously, at what point did we start noticing this ethnic bigotry, ethnic toxicity in Nigeria? At what point? Because when I was growing up, I don't think I actually noticed it, but whether it was there, I believe that since the politicians took over from the military, this ethnic toxicity and bigotry has multiplied. It has bloomed. It has blossomed to their own benefits, to the benefits of these politicians. Most of them, when they are in that asura, to share the money or to share our national cake. Um, nobody, I don't believe they talk about ethnicity 
or maybe even if they talk about it, they keep it at minimum. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the things that affect the masses, bring up this ethnicity, they bring up uh, uh, our religious uh, affiliations. And so long as we remain, uh, 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 we are not united as a country, we're not going to go anywhere. We, all of us, the evil man, the reason into trading, the houses are into their own business, the Yoruba, everybody, all of us have our own strengths. And all these strengths have always worked in our favor. At what point did this shift? So now to the point that the only thing we talk about, there is nothing in Nigeria that you bring up that at the end of the day doesn't digress into ethnicity or religious affiliations. At what point? We need to start looking at where our problem lies. And to the best of my knowledge, this is politicians. Right? So long as they spend their time, their money, making us believe that we hate ourselves mm. while they stick fat on our national, on our collective uh, 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 wealth, we're going nowhere. Mm. And um, Olu, I heard you talk about uh, local government of autonomy that Tinibu, um, um uh, the current government, actually, um, I picked a lot of interest in that because that is the way it's supposed to be, right? But, you know, history is there for all of us to actually, for us to know who is doing the right thing and who is not doing, or who has been consistent. I think you will believe with me that Tinibu is also the one when he was a governor. He fought the federal government to a standstill on this local government autonomy. He made sure that every revenue that the federal government gives to states is being controlled by the state government and not the local government. He fought to destabilize the local government. So why do you think that right now that it looks like he has the judiciary in his pocket. And the way the judiciary even handled the case of this local government autonomy was a little bit absurd. The speed they used in the approval and passing all this is a little bit consigning. So it leads me to now think that if someone that has shown me, you know, I don't know if any of you plays um, cards. When you give, when you show me your dealings, I will think of or look at where you are actually going. Mm -hmm. A man that has fought against local government autonomy some years back, coming now to actually tell me that he is for local government autonomy. How do you think? How is how sincere is that? And I don't understand why the governors themselves are all of a sudden silent about it, but they are not ready to implement what the, the judiciary actually spilled out. That is number one. Number two, I heard what you guys were talking about Dangote and um, and um, I think I think it was you that mentioned David Huguen, uh, right? About the West and all that. Yeah. And we're talking about you, right? Yeah. It's and I believe you know that Owando, which is also owned by the family of the president recently bought um, um, a large chunk of the Ajip oil company as well. And they took over some most of the assets of the Ajip oil company. And 
and they also took over their oil blocks as well. Now, do you think, I like when Akin mentioned that, how can someone that is a player, a major player, not just a passerby player, he is a major player, be able to abdicate a case like this? Is he fighting against his own interests? As a human being, it's, it's normal for us to fight for our own interests, our own personal interests. That comes first. That's the way I see it. Other people might see it differently. Do you think that he will fight against his own interests? I'm not going to talk about the importation of the refined products. The one that said, because I'm not too sure about that one. The one the refinery that said his sons are bought the directors. They bought a mortar. I'm not going to talk about that. I don't have enough proof on that. But why is the president keeping quiet? I'm not a big fan of Dangote. I don't even like him. I don't even believe that he's a rich man because no rich man, even me, that I may not have some business acumen. I can be a rich man if I'm given the opportunity that Dangote has. Okay? Now, but whatever Dangote is doing right now is to the interest of the country. At least 60 at least 50 to 60 percent of the people that will be running that refinery, they will be Nigerians. The chain effect, because the place that the refinery opened, maybe there will be owners of the land, people will buy the land, build houses, people that will be selling building materials yeah. will also be gain from it. Even the woman that cooks her book by the side of the refinery will be able to make enough money to feed her own family because the people, the contractors, the staff, everybody that has, um, so the chain effect of having a refinery is huge. Yeah. Not directly. I'm talking about indirectly. Yeah. So how is a, a president that took an oath? Uh, because if they actually look at the oath of office that the president took on that 29th day of May, to protect the interests of the country, but cannot, or will I say his inactions, I'm not going to say his actions, I will say his inactions shows that he does not have the interest, he's not protecting the interest of the country. I care less about Dangote, I care less about what happens to him. He has enough money to take care of himself. He's even talking of selling the, uh, the refinery that he built with almost $20, $20 billion. He's talking about selling it. But that means he still has much more somewhere else to go invest somewhere else. But how about the ones that will benefit the country? And why did these people all of a sudden Remember, there's a refinery in Portagot. And the president is not saying anything about it. And that refinery has been there, not refining a single product. All of a sudden, Dangote came up, built his own refinery. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they remember that there's a refinery that it will start producing how many million barrels in a day. That's because we're liars. Yeah. Right? So that's the thing. We are not telling ourselves the truth. And it makes it worse when number one person is not telling us the truth no. by his actions and his inactions. It's not even him. I think it makes it worse when we support these people because it is <laughs> it is us that are running into the ground. No, I, 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 you, know, you know why I, I won't talk about people supporting, uh, I, I like to call them the enablers, because when you enable someone, he feels that he's doing he's doing the right thing, right? The enablers. I'm not going to talk about that. those people. I'm talking about these 
active players. Because I know that if Tinubu comes up and he comes up today and says, hey, Dangote, you're going to get how many million barrels a day? Trust me, Dangote is going to get it. The modular refineries that we are giving licenses from several years ago, nobody hears about them anymore. Right? And all these things makes me to believe that we are living a life of lies. Well, and all these things are affecting because how what affects your your economy? When there are inconsistencies, when there are instabilities in here, in your, in, in your policies, because when you say something, these are your policies and you're doing exactly the opposite, it doesn't help anybody. And how does that trickle down to the common masses? You might as well have joined us in the studio right? because... <laughs> um, um, somebody mentioned that he increased the the uh, uh, the I believe is is Aki or or Lu. They increased uh, the minimum wage to seventy thousand. The seventy thousand is even in terms of value. It's even less than the thirty thousand they were making before. In terms of value, right? The fuel has increased by three hundred percent. Why didn't he increase the salary by 300 percent? Well, isn't that true? The, the, so, is the, it econo if, you, if you ask the economy, it's not economically viable to do that. You can't do that in any any economy. Even no, no, in but the isn't it true that that we didn't even have mentioned that the, that the salary? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we have why mentioned what? Economically, why is it not economically mm -hmm. viable? After all, the president. He has the right. He will throw the he will throw the country in a mess. No minimum. No country will increase minimum wage. Cabinet of any of our presidents ever that has ever ruled Nigeria. The current president has the largest cabinet. I'm talking about his cabinet. I'm not talking about the people in 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 the legislative arm. I'm talking about his cabinet. That's an interesting point. He has the largest cabinet in. The presidency of every president that has ever ruled Nigeria. The only one that is closer to him is also an a APC president who happened to have about 44. He has 48. Do you know the, 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 the amount of money that is going to be allocated to those four people? I believe that is one of the demands of the people that are protesting as well. Yes, not so talk of over 1,000 people but going to Dubai and all those extra money that no, they use it, for everything it, it that it they do. It doesn't it's make clear. any sense. You are, look, we know we don't have money. You are talking about economic viability. Our inflation rate is at about almost about 35%, right? Our unemployment rate is almost about 30%. That is the official. But in reality, it's more than 50%. Because you cannot tell me that a country that has... Look at us. We All of us, when we come Nigerians, when we come outside Nigeria, we excel. We fly. People, people, because it's gotten to the point that we are recognized globally as very smart people. But we cannot move our country forward. We move one step forward and 37 steps backwards because of these politicians. The last election and started with facts. Everybody was happy. It ended up to where exactly the politicians want us, which is ethnic and religious bigotry. And they won at the end of the day. Right? And it hurts seeing our country like this. Look at the instability, uh, food insecurity. If we do not know, food insecurity is worse than political unrest or any other insecurity in the country. Food insecurity is the worst. I heard you mention that the leaders of the protests, does the protest need to have a leader? A hungry man does not know who his father is. He's hungry. Can you see when your child is hungry? Do they care if you're going to kill them? You, do they care when you tell them there's no food? The child will continue.
continue to cry. He's not going to stop. Are you going to turn around and say, oh, maybe still is somebody that is telling him to cry? He is hungry. You need to recognize that the child is hungry. And when you, before you start solving a problem, you need to at least acknowledge the product problem. You cannot solve a problem by denying that that is not a problem. You need to acknowledge it first. And then you look for genuine, you genuinely look for a solution. So, I don't know how we can help to get our country moving because Nigeria is a beautiful country. I love that country. I have a suggestion. But, yeah. So, all right, somebody, all right. somebody sent a message saying that what Nigeria actually needs to do is first of all to just come together and apologize to the East. Now I'm saying this again, not because I am from the East. Because doing apologize to the East and have a national day to celebrate the East for what the East was put through um, at the Civil War, for taking everything, for stripping the East of everything and then starting from the scratch. And then after that, the next thing is now allow all the different regions like Aki was talking about to have to be empowered. And that's the only way that Nigeria can move forward. If we don't do that, we are not going anywhere. Let's just agree and accept that now. We can't go anywhere if we don't start proceeding in in sincerity and on a balanced um a balanced suite. Um can I can I contribute? Yes, please. Uh -huh. um, um when you say when somebody says celebrate or uh, celebrate the East or whatever that they have done today to the to the East. No, not celebrate, apologize. Apologize to the East. Okay. Look, this is my own stand. This is my own opinion about this. Um, I think that apology has been rendered. If it is apologizing, I believe that Mortala Mohammed, God bless his soul, before he was assassinated, did that apology. And he tried to move the country forward. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not in support of any anybody. I'm just stating my own opinion on this. But the Igbo leaders, the Igbo leaders, because we need to hold ourselves accountable to a lot of things and leave out we we'll probably we will come to the uh, uh, uh ethnic issue but we need to hold ourselves accountable as well because some of our leaders are feeding fat yes on this okay. so the question is what has an average evil man done to the evil leaders because if, oh, that's a good one. If we do not send the message, all the people they're going to take us for granted. Yes, that's a good one. That's a very if good one. Our leaders that we're sending to the House of Rep goes over there to drink coffee. Remember, we sent somebody. That is our belief. It doesn't matter how he got there, but someone that is representing us must be talking about our interest. Now, when the person that is talking about us, that's supposed to talk about us, represent our interest, in the, whether in the House of Rep or the House of Senate, goes over there, drinks coffee, takes money, and do otherwise. And then we allow them what, to go scot-free, eh? And we allow them to go scot-free. Mm -hmm. what, what does that say about us? Yeah. That is why nobody takes us Seriously. Exactly. Right? If you do not celebrate yourself, if you do not celebrate yourself, I remember here uh, uh, here in the US when they were celebrating the, is it the Juneteenth? The Juneteenth about the Black History Month or something. 
It was never a national holiday. But the blacks continued to celebrate it. They continued. And the blacks in Congress kept pushing for it to be a national holiday. Today is a national holiday. All right. Now, if the evils, I know that due to some issues, right? You know, they're trying to delete history. They're not talking about um, um, the civil war and the, the, the heroes that died uh, trying to protect what they believe in, right? Nobody's talking about it. Maybe, maybe that's the reason why nobody wants to recognize that. It's supposed to be part of our history that we're supposed to celebrate, even if the whole Nigeria is not celebrating us. <laughs> we need to celebrate ourselves. Yeah, I we think... need to celebrate ourselves. Yeah. So, okay, the country apologizing to the evils. I, I don't think it's it's actually necessary, but the president should stop the current president. Stop whatever ethnic bigotry that is going on right now, especially the one that said Igbos must go, that is the caption that's supposed to be from the 20th of August till the 30th of August. Yes. Even today, I believe the 10th or 11th of August. Nobody, I have not even heard the president say, well, look, have you heard of it being addressed? Have you heard of that being addressed? No. You've not heard of any anything to address that and to, to try to quell it, right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's too bad. Is it possible that maybe the president doesn't care? Because I do remember that Remy Tunubu, his wife, was actually agitating against the Igbos during the elections. It's quite possible. And if he allows this to happen on his watch, maybe he won't care because he's he's very close to the grave now too. So I don't know. I, guess that's I don't think. Yeah. How do you know it's close to the grave? For all of us now, because we get older, the, the older you are, the closer you are to the grave. Just the statements, okay. just the facts, statements of facts. Oh, you found it said it's very close, so that's what I was like. That very sounds very. Well, don't don't <laughs> hammer on that. <laughs> well, leave that when you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, I know I'll have to let you go, Ulu, because you've um, trustly. So no, I just wanted to quickly uh, correct something that you said about mm -hmm. Tinubu fighting uh, on local government autonomy. No, Tinubu never fought. Uh, on local government autonomy, he fought Obasanjo because he created LCDA um, councils in Lagos State because he said he wanted more development closer to the people. And Obasanjo said no, that it's only the um, uh, what's it called the recognized LLG local governments that will get uh, funds, and he withheld the uh, allocation for years. And but at the end, Tinubu won that case uh, in court. So he didn't fight autonomy. He fought to create more uh, local government councils in Lagos states because he wanted development, more development closer to the people. All right. So that's that's the. Then I think I can't remember the other one that I wanted to uh, quickly talk about. But yeah, I think it's been a good. I really enjoyed what he uh, his contribution also, and I I really like you know those perspectives and i like the aspect where he said evils should celebrate themselves you know the other person that sends in the message that ego should be apologized to the question is for true reconciliation is it only them that need apologies so because that is where the problem keeps getting bigger and bigger we don't who else everybody, who else as in who everybody else? Every didn't wasn't there killings on the other side too? Didn't it didn't wasn't there issues that some other people that have animosity against the egos? So we all can argue like this. Who, like who? Like who? Like who? I'm not. I'm not so trying to. That, other, to so before the, the civil war sorry. started, before the civil war started, other regions too were ho are holding on to the fact that uh, what's it called? Their leaders were killed and Igbo leaders were were spared. Right, it some are holding on. It was also the stripping of the Igbos of everything that they had, and then they had to start from so, and from that, that time. And, and, yeah, and uh, but but also in the south, also in the southwest, the southwest would say that a lot of the Igbos that came back to the southwest met their properties intact, and oh, really? also they were. Oh yes, in the southwest. Okay. Okay, maybe ask you, you provide me. The southwest, 
And even even yeah, even people that have properties, even no, even people that have properties, rents were taken for them, for and then I was handed over to them when they came back in the okay, southwest. Maybe you that provide happened. me something outside of the studio when we are done. I, I'd like to sit and I'd like to provide it for people so that we. Oh can yes, have, can I, yeah. Can I can I affirm or also I disagree on something that you said? Um, okay. Um, I, I, when Igbo was actually after the Civil War, right? Yes, yes. in Lagos, most of the Igbos got their properties back. Okay. That's correct. That's but a good one for in, people to know. In River State, most of the Igbos lost their properties after the Civil right. War when they came back. That is right. Oh, and yes. Yeah, um, that's right. Where where I I want to differ a little bit is with respect of Igbos sparing uh, 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 sparing their own leaders during the Civil War. The question we should be asking, like I said earlier when I started the first time, if you don't know where the race started beginning you, you will never know when it's going to end, right? Yeah. We need to understand our history first of all. What was the cause of the Civil War? Even the Civil War, which was caused, that Civil War, the Major Zogo, they actually struck. The reason why they struck was to free Awolo. That was the major reason why they struck. To free Aulu because Akin Tola refused, he lost the Southwest election. To yeah, that's, that is what we know. Right? That's actually what we know. And so we need to understand that. So where the unrest was happening was in the Southwest, not in the Southeast. Remember that. Because when they tell the stories, they don't give us the full facts for us. Look, God gave every one of us. The the the, the 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 brain for us to actually when we look at something we should be able to dissect the the, the, the lies from the truth okay now and when people are giving us facts they should give us the whole picture and leave the rest for us to 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 take care of so this major zongo he struck with his group which is actually made up of how many people there are some people from the southwest, they're people from the north, that were part of that. Major Zog, we are talking about, he's only an Igbo man by name. And even the Igbo man that he is called, he's not even, even the, the place where he's from, used to claim that they are not Igbos. He's from Delta State. He's not even from the five eastern Igbo states. He's from Delta states. And Delta states, before now, they were claiming they were not Igbos. So, how can the things of someone that is from a place that is not even Igbo be regarded as Igbo? But that is okay. Now, the, when they struck, remember when the British came, they started education. Igbos we are coming as a community. They come as a community, they train their people. So most of the Igbos were high school graduates. Some went ahead to the university. Majority, so as soon as they, we had our independence, who are the likely people that will take over? Are the people that either you have a high school graduate or university graduate? That is how most of the Igbos became you know, they were holding, holding all the all the positions, even in the military. Ojuku, I believe he went to Oxford in the UK. Okay, I think we we I think we will end um we'll be rounding up, we'll be rounding up soon. It's it's been very highly educative and I, I wish that we could continue, but just so that we don't stretch it and make it too long and also allow my guests to leave so that he will like uh, he will honor us next time thank you for having me thank you so much thank you it's just that we did it thank you so much for your contribution very very helpful thank you and yeah that's it so olu thank you for thank you for honoring my invitation
for our invitation on Diaspora Lounge and for the exchange. And I hope that all of us will just go back and, and recognize that we need to stop siding with the government or whoever is there because they haven't done the first thing that needs to be done, which is to bring us all to a level playing ground. Let us function as a family. As long as we continue like this, in this lie, as Akin said, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. Let's just see what this protest will yield. Um, if there won't be any changes after the protest, I didn't really think that there will be changes um, as far as the government deciding uh, we're going to do this now because the government has been very insensitive. I don't want to start going into how they are still mm -hmm. awarding themselves so much money to do basic personal things like changing cars and changing furniture. You know, let me not go into that. But that just shows us the kind of people that we have. And that's even secondary because if in the first place we have people who cared, they would actually start from restructuring. And once we haven't done that restructuring, everything else we're doing is building, uh, building on a on a bad foundation. The frame, the, the, so the whole framework is not going to be solid, and that's that's what we have. Tell me if I'm wrong. Ah well, yeah, government will always have support, and they always and that's democracy. People will always have who they support and who they don't support. Yes, this government has been a little insensitive. Uh, you know, it's all about optics anyway for any government. You know, there's you are doing, you are carrying out reforms that's going to bring a little bit of hardship, and yet you are seeing all uh, living in largesse or spending money. So, I mean, people should be made to see that, oh, we are all in this together. You know, that will have with some nerves and all that. So, but like the the hunger that we've been shouting about yes things are expensive but nobody uh, the people that cried loudest when bags of tomato was one hundred thousand are not talking right now when the bag of when basket of tomato has gone so down right now you know so yes it's there are issues um nigeria will continue to talk about it but like i always say we need to know um uh, you know be very logical in our criticism, be very logical in our con uh, condemnation of whatever government we have in power. And uh, it's our country. We can never be, uh, we can never have uh, another country. Nigeria is still our country. Yeah, but when it was run it into the ground. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Gonna, no, we're not going to run it into the ground. Nigeria mm. is. Uh, I see. I see a lot of hope in that country. I see a lot of positives right now, and um, yeah, I'm one of those that are very, very optimistic about Nigeria as a I country. I understand where your optimism is coming from. Is it just uh, positive thinking and hope? That's what it's you're not, saying. It's not about. I mean, I mean, the basic reforms are coming in that are you know pointing in the right direction. I'm gonna have you back another mm -hmm. time because I want to understand oh, the yeah. basic reforms that are talking about. I want you to educate us because. Oh, yeah. 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 Subsidies number one. Subsidies number one reform that has happened. Yeah. Uh, forex, forex subsidies another one. So local government autonomy is another one. So yeah, we're getting there. Right, I mean, and no government, no, no government can be perfect. So that's one thing that I want us to know. <laughs> I don't think anyone is asking for perfection. We're not looking for an angel. We're not looking for an angel. Nigerians want it. Nigerians want perfection. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Just hold Bye. on. Let me close. Hold on. Let me just um. Let me close. Yeah. And thank you for being with us on this episode. I'm sure that this episode has been highly educative, and some of us will go back and think about the things that we've said. You know, um, but they know there's nothing that we even said here that they don't know. So let's not pretend about that. It's only if if they really want a change, but I don't think that they would care. And the people who are trying to come in even in the next 12 years or 16 years do not care already because they're thinking about how they're going to uh, line their own pockets. And unfortunately, the truth is that if we did care, we wouldn't need to be worrying about lining our pockets because we'll be comfortable, you know, so it's just a pity. And since we don't care about ourselves, then we'll continue like this and what will take us out of there i think we all know what will take us out we all know what will take us out of this thing and i'm not going to say it here on the platform all right thank you for being with us and we close
please remember to like and share our video and subscribe if you haven't thank you for joining us bye bye